Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Atat Compagno and in this video we shall discuss 3CX phone system security features. When deploying 3CX phone system, you should keep security high on your priority list. If your 3CX phone system is compromised, a malicious intruder may be able to trigger multiple phone calls, including to destinations with very expensive call tariffs, inflicting a very large phone bill. 3CX phone system has a number of built-in security features that allows it to resist and identify the large majority of attacks, as well as notify the system administrator about suspected attack events. If we use a combination of these features together with other network security techniques, such as router and firewall rules, and we also regularly monitor the alerts to close potential holes, we can work towards maximizing security for our 3CX phone system installation. By default, the management console, web reports, and my phone are accessible over HTTP connections. System administrators may decide to implement HTTPS over port 443. The process to achieve this requires you to implement a certificate correctly within the operating system and the web server on the PBX machine, modify 3CX phone system's web configuration files for HTTPS to be enabled, create the HTTPS bindings in the web server and configure certificates on 3CX MyPhone client machines. Note that this feature requires version 11 or higher. You may find additional information in the link shown here. Phone devices configured with 3CX phone system are authenticated with extension number, authentication ID and authentication password. When creating extensions, ensure that these values are all unique and sufficiently robust. Apart from that, these values should be reviewed and adjusted frequently enough to resist attempts at brute force intrusion. Since we've touched this topic, let's spend a few words about 3CX phone system and passwords. Utilizing brute force and dictionary attacks, malicious users may uncover password protected areas such as the management console's web interface and extension configuration. Strong credentials for extension passwords and for the 3CX phone system administrator login are of the utmost importance when deploying a PBX. A strong password should contain at least seven characters, both upper and lower case characters, a minimum of one numeric character. For extra peace of mind, you may restrict things further by requiring even longer passwords or by, for example, requiring at least one symbol character. 3CX phone system is set to automatically generate random passwords when producing new extensions, fax extensions and bridges. It is very important to periodically review these passwords and adjust accordingly when necessary. If an extension does not need remote connectivity, you may disallow use of extensions outside the LAN on a per extension basis. And you can also extend this to restrict use of the extension remotely even using the 3CX tunnel protocol. These techniques may reduce the frequency with which you need to rotate extension credentials. Each extension needs to have a PIN number if your users require remote access for my phone, web reports, wallboard and the management console. PIN numbers are numeric only, so careful attention is essential to limit access only where absolutely necessary, to educate your users to change PIN numbers regularly, and to require your users to use longer PIN numbers. We can now take a look at some of 3CX phone system's built-in security features. From the management console sidebar, navigate to the setting nodes and select security. This node consists of four tabs. Secure SIP TLS, anti-hacking, IP blacklist, and allowed country codes. And we can start by looking at the secure SIP tab. 3CX phone system may be configured to use a secure SIP and TLS, in which SIP messaging will be encrypted and therefore more secure. This is a three-step process in which you will create certificates, for example with simple CA, which is a separate download. Then you add and enable the generated certificate and key to 3CX phone system and enable secure SIP. And now subsequently configure IP phones to communicate via secure SIP. This process and downloadable files may be found in the link provided. Note that 3CX phone system secure SIP may only be configured to work within the LAN. We now take a look at 3CX phone system's built-in anti-hacking features and how to better secure your PBX using these features. 
The Failed Authentication Protection section can be used to specify the amount of failed authentications 3CX will accept before placing the source IP of these requests in the IP blacklist. This way, malicious users attempting to authenticate with 3CX phone system will be blacklisted and therefore unable to reattempt registration. To tighten security, you can reduce this value from the default value of 25. A system administrator will receive email notifications when the anti-hacking module puts IP addresses in the blacklist, and he can then review each case and react accordingly. The Failed Challenge Requests section is designed to defend against fake register requests sent by some SIP entity. It defines how many password challenge requests sent by 3CX phone system can remain unanswered by the registering entity before 3CX phone system will add the source IP address to the IP blacklist. The Blacklist Time Interval section defines the blacklist duration in seconds. This will severely reduce the effectiveness of any brute force attempt to crack authentication passwords, and we can tighten security further by increasing this value, thereby increasing the amount of time a potentially abusive IP address remains in the IP blacklist before being released. The three security barrier sections are designed to protect 3CX phone system from flood attacks to the support. The security barrier green section allows us to set a time interval in milliseconds where counting starts but no action is enforced. If this value is set to a high value, this could severely reduce the system's security. After the green time interval has passed, the amber and red barrier levels become active. The security barrier amber section defines the number of SIP packets received per second which, once exceeded, will put the source IP address into a temporary IP blacklist for a 5 second interval. The security barrier red section defines the number of SIP packets received per second which, once exceeded, will put the source IP address into the regular IP blacklist where it will remain until the previously defined blacklist time interval expires. The IP Blacklist tab contains all IP addresses that have been automatically blacklisted based on the parameters set in the Anti-Hacking tab. We are also able to manually add IP addresses to the IP Blacklist by clicking the Add button and defining whether you would like to blacklist a single IP address or a range of IP addresses. For a single IP address, simply select the Select Single IP Address radio button, enter the IP into the text field and click OK. Otherwise, select the radio button labelled Selected Range of IP Addresses and define the following fields. The network address or network ID, this is the first address of the subnet. A subnet mask, which identifies the range of IP addresses which will be included in this entry. An IP address range, which is automatically generated depending on the network address and the subnet mask. And the action, where you can choose to deny or allow traffic from IP addresses that match this entry. Selecting the Allow action is the equivalent of creating a range of whitelisted IP addresses. The Description field allows you to add an informational note to describe the nature of this entry, and the expiry date defines when this entry will no longer be valid and can be removed from the IP blacklist. Once configured, click the Apply and OK buttons to save the changes. You can further reduce the exposure of your 3CX phone system to hacker attempts by using VPN-based solutions to connect your remote offices. Here we shall be taking a look at the Allowed Country Codes tab. Dialed numbers are built up of an international dialing prefix, the country code, possibly an area code, and the phone number itself depending on whether the call is local, long distance or international. This section provides the ability to allow or disallow calls based on country codes dialed. From the image shown here, you can see that we are allowing calls only to the United States and Canada, and disallowing calls to all other country codes. This way, should a malicious user gain access to the PBX and perform an outbound call to any of the two, this restriction will limit the amount of numbers which the hacker will be able to dial out to, therefore minimizing the costs of such an incident. For a best practices approach, you should disallow calls to all countries that your 3CX phone system users do not need to call, and also disallow outbound calls completely outside office hours. 
As a 3CX phone system administrator, you may additionally choose to secure extensions audio streams using Secure RTP on a per extension basis. To enable this option, you must first enable it from the 3CX management console sidebar, navigating to the settings general global options tab. From the system wide options section, enable the option switch on secure RTP or SRTP. Now, you may proceed to configure each of your extensions that require encrypted audio and in the other tab for the extension enable the switch on secure RTP SRTP option. Any person who calls into 3CX phone system and reaches a digital receptionist has the opportunity to dial the voicemail extension, which is typically 999. If the caller can authenticate using an extension number and PIN, he may get the opportunity number 3 inside options to call some other number. This feature could be hacked using automated outbound dialers using either dictionary or brute force methods until a valid extension number and PIN combination are found. As a preliminary defense, the installer for 3CX phone system starts up your system with this feature disabled. You should only enable this feature if you fully understand the security implications and risks. If you have correctly restricted the international numbers that the PBX can make from its outbound routes, you can restrict the damage that a hacker can cause. Also, if you regularly monitor the alerts generated by the system, you should be able to capture events reporting calls to disallowed country codes, identify the breach, and further secure the system. Also, if you configure the system to not allow outside calls during out-of-office hours, you can further restrict the potential damage. Normally, a hacker would try to make calls at a time when your PBX is idle, so your users would not be present and therefore cannot notice that some other entity is making calls. Any authenticated ZIP phone can also be used as a remote extension. A hacker may attempt to register as a remote extension, and if he correctly guesses the credentials, he can impersonate a user's extension and make unauthorized outbound calls. 3CX phone system provides a system administration the option to control certain remote extension functionality. Using built-in security features, you should, wherever possible, allow remote connections only from trusted IP address ranges using a combination of the IP blacklist features and your router or firewall rules. You should also disallow extensions from register as remote extensions, even possibly using the 3CX tunnel protocol if not necessary. Create complex authentication ID and password values and change the values regularly. Require the use of VPN solutions to lock out unwanted intruders. Tighten the security thresholds for the anti-hacking module. And implement secure SIP to avoid man-in-the-middle attacks. That leads us to the conclusion of this video, in which we discuss 3CX phone system security. Please check our other videos at the link provided.